in your Bibles. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hmm. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. And I'm reading from the amplified version of the Bible. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise for the Jews from another place. <laughs> and you and your father's house will perish since you did not help when you had the chance. And who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this and for this very purpose. We are in the midst of celebrating the Jewish festival of Purim, which began at sunset yesterday and ends at nightfall this evening. Purim commemorates the, salva the salvation, commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia, which today would officially be the Islamic Republic of Iran. Purim celebrates and commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia from Haman's evil plot to kill all the Jews as recorded in the book of Esther. Purim means lot, lot in ancient Persia. <laughs> Uh, this jolly festival, because they celebrate it joyfully, like how we would all celebrate when deliverance comes to us. <sighs> this jolly festival got its name because Haman had thrown lots <laughs> to determine when he would carry out his diabolical scheme. Hmm. I believe there's a word there, right there. For some people, where it may seem like your enemy has already chosen the time. Your enemy may have already chosen the place for your demise. But there is a deliverer. There is a mighty one. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we can ask, think, or imagine. Today, we are at a point in history when the age-old message of Purim is just as real today as it was in the 4th century BCE, about 400 years before Christ. The message of Purim is just as real today as it was when it originally happened. Today, we are in a time when there is a clear and when there is a present threat in and from Persia. <laughs> Once again, regarding the annihilation of the Jewish people, we are in a time and we are in a prophetic season where once again anti-Semitism has risen to a fevered and dangerous pitch and a time where because of royal or comfortable positions that it, 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 it would probably be more comfortable to remain silent as we see and understand the 
prophetic and evil season that we are in. But just as Mordecai asked his orphaned cousin <laughs> that he had raised as his own surrogate daughter and, and who had now become the queen, who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this and for this very purpose. Oh, saints of God, I think that there is a message even right there for someone that might be in a position of influence or someone that might be in a position of prominence or for someone that might be in a position of authority and sees wrong. Sees the wrong and the in deceit and evil going on. But yet, because of the comfort of your position, you might be afraid or, or too comfortable to stand up for what's right because your mind is so focused on what you believe you might lose as a backlash of, of, of you standing up hmm. if it's just for this reason alone god wants you to know that his eye is on the sparrow yeah. Yeah. as jesus clearly told us and if his eye is on the sparrow then you can rest assured. Yes, sir. You can know with all confidence yes. that he will certainly watch over you. And if need be, make a way where there seems to be no way. Hmm. The message of Purim is just as real today because of who Haman is and what he represents. Haman was a Jew-hating descendant of Amalek, the eldest son of Esau. Amalek was the older son of Isaac, and, and note that I have distinguished him as a Jew-hating descendant of Amalek, the eldest son of Esau, who is the older son of Isaac, because it is from Isaac where the main division has come between Israel, who was Jacob, the younger twin, and between Esau, the firstborn twin, and progenitor of the Arabic people. Now what I'm going to share with you, some people might get upset with me, but I could care less. <laughs> we are in a season where for political aggrandizement for a hateful political strategy, it is far easier to paint all Arabic people with a single painter's stroke of being anti-Semitic people and forgetting both the Arab and the Jew uh, were not just brothers, but <laughs> they were twins, <laughs> both stemming from the same Arabic root. And that Jew hatred is a choice for each individual, be they Arabic or Gentile, to make and not Every Arab is an evil person. 
as some races today that have Haman's spirit would have us to believe. Racism and anti-Semitism are the same spirit. And as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, the racist and the segregationist makes no fine distinction between the Negro and the Jew. Jew hatred is a choice for each individual, be they Arabic or Gentile. Jew hatred is a choice for each individual to make and not every Arab is a Jew hater or an evil person. We see this time and time again as when the fires burned down a conservative synagogue in Hayafa, Israel this past December. And Arab wood suppliers did pro bono restoration work, citing the importance of promoting peace as their main motivation. And even more recently, with the resurgence of anti Semitic attacks across this nation, and in particular with the recent attacks on Jewish cemeteries that has been met with an outpouring of more than $136,000 in donations from thousands of Muslims and others who have also pledged to financially support Jewish institutions if there are further attacks. The spirit of Haman is the age-old spirit of the Antichrist that has resurged with its greatest fervor at distinct times during our history. Of course, in Haman's day and as well as in Adolf Hitler's day where it was so pronounced and where unfortunately that same spirit that had inhabited Hitler was responsible for the deadliest military conflict in history where 60 million people People were killed, which was about 3% of the total world population. Hitler mass murdered two-thirds of the 9 million Jews that were living in Europe at that time. But his race hatred was not just focused on Jews as he mass murdered ethnic Poles and other Slavs, Soviet citizens and Soviet prisoners of war, communists, homosexuals, Freemasons, Jehovah Witnesses, and many other type of different people. Because as Dr. King said, the racist and the segregationist makes no fine distinction between the Negro and the Jew. In actuality, that spirit hates all ethnic, religious, or culturally diverse people. And as we saw with Hitler, who signed the document of adult murder, I call it, euthanasia, which was a policy of killing selected disabled patients. That age-old hatred, that age-old 
hateful spirit even hated the handicapped. Every arm of Germany's bureaucracy was involved in the logistics and the carrying out of the mass murder. And at that time, they were a militant set. But because of their spiritual and their emotional and their logical blindness and zeal, they could not see the reality of the evil that they were doing. So it did not make sense to even argue with them. But at the end of the day, when Hitler was defeated, as history shows us by his own ineptitude as commander-in-chief, and his failure to listen to the intelligence of his generals. And <laughs> the Russian winter where his over ambition caused him to miscalculate just how cold winter can be in Russia. And his investment I mean investment uh, of a significant number of his troops that lost their lives when they had to face the full onslaught of Arctic cold in their summer uniforms. It is ironic today, the words that Hitler then said to his generals regarding that. It's a strange thing how history repeats itself sometimes. That we have only to kick in the door and the whole rotten structure will come crashing down. <laughs> Millions of Germans lost their lives blindly following Hitler. And although the statistics are not accurate, partly because the Nazis engaged in altering facts to keep their followers misled, uh, but some estimates place the statistics of German military casualties somewhere around 5.3 million people. You see, there is a price to pay for blindness and self-deception. As when I watch them, I watch so many documentaries show that after the war, most Germans could not understand how they could have been so misled. And you know, uh, they probably never will understand it because it's a spiritual thing. Yeah. Sister Army, get ready to read for me. First John chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. First John chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. You see, today we can look at Bible prophecy and understand that as anti-Semitism and prejudice once again intensifies to such alarming levels. History has a bad habit, I call it, of repeating itself. This time, though, it will set the stage to mark the emergence of the final Antichrist. First John chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Wonderful. Children, it is the last hour, the end of this age. And just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him, even now many Antichrist false teachers have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last hour. They went out from us, seeming at first to be Christians, 
but they were not really of us because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out teaching false doctrine so that it would be clearly shown that none of them are of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our minds, and guards us from error. Now, when the end of the age, the last hour comes and the final Antichrist uh, appears, scripture shows us that there will be many false teachers at that time um, that will be operational in the Antichrist spirit uh, that would have come from the true apostolic succession, but that were uh, not truly born again and spiritually transformed. Because if they had been, they would not have allowed themselves to be moved away from true doctrine, but that in the end times, it is our anointing, which sets us apart. The spirit of the Ruha Kakodesh, which will empower us and which will illuminate our minds to guard us from error. Oh, God is sending out a warning to gypsy Christians that love to travel up and down with itching ears. God is saying, be still and know that I am God. There is a spirit that I call the gypsy spirit of Christians that needs to be put to rest because the end times are upon us. Now, biblical eschatology teaches us that the final antichrist will seek world domination and will attempt to destroy all followers of Yeshua Hamasiah and of the nation of Israel. Just as Hitler's persecutions and just as Hitler's nazification of Germany was carried out in stages, uh, that's the way this thing is going to happen. So too will the final Antichrist accomplishment of his main goals strategic warfare teaches us to never underestimate our adversary especially as we know that age-old serpent to be a subtle and a deceptive creature world domination requires the establishment of a new world order to bring about the major, the, the, the major, major change in the world with the balance of world power. Uh, as we look at current global governmental structures, 159 of the world's 206 sovereign states use the word republic as part of their official names. Now, 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 while both modern and ancient republics vary widely in their ideology, the general concept that this title mainly tries to convey is that a republic is a form of government in which the country is considered a public, that's you and me, matter not the private concern or property of the rulers. <laughs> but right now, there is a shifting going on to where in actuality we are moving away from the 
democratic and republic ideals that we once espoused to, to, to where uh, many of the world's governmental systems are evolving into oligarchies. Oligarchies where a small group of mega rich people are in the process of gaining control of nations to strengthen their power base for world domination. This now <laughs> is where my messages intersect at a, I'll say, a three-way intersection. We have the release of the Antichrist spirit for the arrival of the final Antichrist. The stage is being set. We have the Purim message. And thirdly, we, as I have been teaching, have the trinities of causal creation. And f I've been focusing on the trinity of wealth, which is the abundance of valuable resources. We have zoomed in on the trinity of food resources, which are a water. People don't realize that water will soon become more scarce than oil. Meat, which will be connected to our water and our seed, because your meat got to eat and your meat got to drink. <laughs> Sister Kelly, get ready to read for me Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 2. And of course, uh, seed, seed. Uh, seed was where we left off in my last message. Uh, here too is where these three topics might appear to be so different. Here is where they intersect the Antichrist, <laughs> Purim, and what is best described as the current seed war that is going on. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. No, 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 no. In different translations, it even brings it clearer that the dragon, Satan, stood on the sandy shore of the sea. The first thing that our Bible study and concordance shows us is that Satan, as depicted as the dragon, and standing on the sandy shore of the sea, also symbolically standing in leadership over the unholy trinity, uh, comprised of the first beast, who is the Antichrist, and the second beast, who is the false prophet. The animal parts and horns are all indicative of the government in which Satan, through Antichrist, will rule multiple governments. Uh, saints of God, the process has begun. The process has begun oligarchical power where a small group of mega rich people are in the process of gaining control and they've gotten a lot of it of nations and public industry to strengthen their power base for the antichrist is already on the way now, now, these mega rich people are probably so blinded by their own agendas uh, of further mega wealth, the kind of wealth where we can't even imagine, <laughs> or prominent noble recognition, which their money cannot buy, because your money could buy a lot of things, but it cannot buy respect. And a lot of these rich 
people, they are starved for accolades and for people to say, oh, that is wonderful. You are just our savior. <laughs> They're starved for attention. Do not make the mistake of fooling yourself to believe that just because a person has a lot of money that they have soundness of mind. There are a lot of very, very rich people with fractured minds, with emotional baggage. They go through relationships like I go through Dairy Queens. <laughs> Not because you're rich means you got it all together. They cannot buy respect. They cannot buy love. And they will probably not even realize when they internationally, because it's not just happening in one country, <laughs> when they internationally band together to create their new world order and the rise of that charismatic figure takes place to lead them all to the end times. Mm. But one thing is for sure, and that is that he is coming back for church that will be reflecting his glorious splendor. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That's spiritual purity. God is looking for a righteous seed that will stand for him without compromise and without modifying the word of God to justify their sins. Some people will try to change the very word of God to justify their sinful agendas. Let God be true and every man a lie. In my last message, as we looked at the seed battle going on right now with these multinational corporations merging to corner key markets in seed and chemicals, uh, which will enable them to manipulate economic systems and trade. In this battle that so many people that sit in our churches around the world are oblivious to, less than a dozen multinational corporations will be in control of 70% of the whole world's seed market. The thing that is most disturbing about all of this is that these mega rich corporations now in control of the seed market have genetically modified agricultural seed to maximize their profit and have disregarded our health with the seed that they have modified and produced to often engineering junk food that generate heart disease and stroke and diabetes and cancer, so-called. There is a lot that we can learn from the natural world with the globally impacting seed battle going on right now. And in particular with the chief of genetically modified seed, Monsanto. I will just hit one point this morning to be mindful of the time. And that point is that light and darkness cannot mix. 
light and darkness cannot mix. Brother Dez, get ready to read for me 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 15. Uh, we can learn this from science, as many of our agricultural uh, scientists will tell you that genetically modified organisms, GMOs, and organics cannot coexist. Trying to keep a farm GMO free is harder than you might think. Some GMOs don't stay put where they're planted. They blow into your yard and into other farmers' property. It's quite common for them to contaminate neighboring farms or even farms many miles away when pollen from GMO crop drifts on the wind. Light and darkness cannot mix. Second Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part had he that believeth with an infidel? Hmm. During the early 1970s, Monsanto founded their Agricultural Chemicals Division with a focus on herbicides. And one herbicide in particular that's pretty popular even in the Caribbean. Roundup. Roundup. Because of its ability to eradicate weeds literally overnight, Roundup was quickly adopted by farmers. It, its use increased even more when Monsanto induced Roundup Ready. <laughs> Dangerous chemicals. Crops enabling farmers to saturate the entire feed with weed killer without killing their crops. <sighs> Light and darkness uh, do not mix. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. I need a reader. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Papa V, you want to read that for me? Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Light and darkness cannot mix. Oh, I think this is a word for some people that may be finding themselves in all sorts of different types of relationships, be they in business or be they in friendships or be they in different types of international alliances, light and darkness do not mix. Papa V. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Hmm. Whatever he does prospers. Light and darkness cannot mix. You know, I thought about this. And I said, there are a couple things about light. One, hear me well if you get into relationships with different types of people. The first thing that light represents is enlightenment. The act or means of enlightening the state of being enlightened. It means that you have somebody that, 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 that has the gift of interpretation of scripture that has wisdom that is enlightened but yet they go and they compromise because of desperation to be in a situation to be in a relationship with people that well i'm not knocking people but the opposite of enlightenment is ignorance so can you imagine 
an enlightened person being with an ignorant person? That must be, yes, this is done it, frustrating. You want to talk about, you know, I like biomedical stuff, and, and they want to talk about, you know, um, I saw Bibi and Boo Boo on TV. <laughs> Just the very thought of that is frustrating. The second thing is someone that has vision, vision, the ability to see spiritually, dealing with someone that is the opposite of vision is blindness that has no vision that they're just living from day to day i'm living for today brother and you ask them well what are your plans i got no plans my plans are to make it to tonight <laughs> and if i make it to tonight then i know god is good they don't always have to be unsaved they just have no vision you got to have a vision for your life if you have no vision, you have no mission, you have no purpose. Without a vision, the people perish. You're married to death. <laughs> Spiritually. Spirituality. The opposite is carnality. Some people are spiritual. Uh, they, they think of things in a spiritual manner. You know, the, if we apply the kingdom principles for increase, God will bring a release. Can you imagine being married or being in a relationship, a business partnership with a carnal person? When you start talking about spiritual principle and law, they say, well, the only law is the bank calling here and it's calling for you. Okay? You know, you could have law as much as you like. You could have word as much as you like. Uh, you better answer your telephone carnal people that cannot relate to you because they are not spiritual iron sharpens iron you need people you need friends around you that are not carnal carnal friends will drag you down and take you off your course from destiny and purpose uh, the, the other thing, when we think of fire, we think of people that are fired up. Yeah. People that, 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 that when they get a word, they get encouraged. Yeah. It feels like fire shut up in my bones. Yeah. When you, you think of the Lord and when you think of his goodness yeah. and what he's done for you, I can yeah. dance, 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 dance yeah. all night. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes. Yes. Can you imagine being fired up and then you got a wet blanket? My God. My God. You got all this fire. Yes. And you want some of all oh, hold hands with me. All oh, hands for what? Is this about romance? No, 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 no. for God's sake. Yes. Hmm. The opposite of fired up is defeated. Some people are defeated before they start to fight. It don't make no sense fighting this battle because you don't lose. Why fight? Why try to do something you know it's not going to work? Defeated, they just, God, they have low self-image and they got no esteem. You are all this fire, and then when you go to them, it's like a wet blanket. They just throw a wet blanket, wet, even cold, icy blanket over you. The other one is radiant, radiant. Some people, they have a radiant disposition. People always say, man, you always happy. No, I'm not always happy, but I make myself happy. You think I don't feel depressed sometimes? Sure. But I don't let depression have me. I have dominion over depression. Hallelujah. When you get up out of the bed, you thank God. God, I thank you. I woke up this morning. I'm radiant. And the thing about radiant people, you, 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 when they come in your presence, you catch the fire. You, 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 you get fired up. The opposite of radiant yes. is gloomy. Oh my God. 
pessimistic and depressed. They carry a heavy spirit. And the worst part about that heavy spirit is eventually they unload it on your shoulders. Exactly. You got to tell them, not today. Not today, devil. Not today. You and your gloomy spirit, pack up your bags and go. Baby, because my word tells me, take my yoke upon me. That's what Jesus said. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I don't need to be dragging you around. Oh, God. Warmth, warmth, warmth. You, you ever been by a, a campfire? Warmth, warmth is, 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 that, is that amicability. And some people, they just, you just love to be around them. I, I love people. You see, I, I learned a principle from a long time ago. This is a heavy principle. When the pauper is happy, the king reigns supreme. So I love on all people. I, I will love from the janitor to the gardener. I, man, I, I told you, know, how is your day going? I love everybody. Because at the end of the day, we all go into the same place. At the end of the day, you got to lie yourself down in the bed the same way I got to lie myself. Don't get all getting all uppity and stuff. I love everybody. But then you have some people. My God. They are cold and unsympathetic to other people. For God's sake, don't cross in the front of them. They might hit gas. Some people are just cold and miserable. They walk around with their head stuck in the air. They refuse to talk to lowly people. Not realizing, and I'm going to share something with you today. <laughs> after my message. Not realizing that that same person who you thought nothing of might be the biggest blessing in your life. Yes. Yes. That might just be your breakthrough. Amen. That just might be a divine connection. But God said, I'm sending you someone that may not look like you want him to look. Because you're expecting this person to come looking and go all in the Armani suit. And they probably don't spend every penny in the bank on the Armani suit. Love people. Yes. Stop acting stuck up. Yes. Amen. Love everybody. Yes. Yes, Pastor. God has a breakthrough. Yes. You see, you know what they love to justify it with? They love to say opposites attract. Really? They love to, that's the first thing you hear them say. Opposites attract. You see, opposites may attract for an exciting uh, 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 and fire-filled season. But eventually, unless they become one, opposites will repel. You'll get to a point where you can stand that person. The minute they walk in, you... Oh, for God's sake, you just just injured my spirit. Woo! (laughs) Because you know what they represent. Opposites attract. That's foolishness. Yes. Opposites attract, but they don't keep them together. That's right. Stop yeah. justifying stupidity. Yeah. One of the key things that we learn from Queen Esther is that it is a dangerous thing to turn a blind eye to sin. That's yes. right. Yeah. Amen. Regardless of what excuse you may have. You, you could come up with all sorts of excuses yeah. as to why you should stay silent yeah. when you see things wrong. Esther, she was adopted. And some might say she did not have the, 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 the right royal pedigree. She's an adopted woman. <clears throat> You'd be surprised. Let me throw a sideball at you. You might say this got nothing to do with prophecy or whatever. But why do you think so many people are even, this pop culture, upset with Prince Harry and his date? 
because she does not have, according to them, royal pedigree. That's what they said about Princess Diana, and she basically saved the kingdom. Some might tell us that we do not have what it takes yes. to do what we have to do or to stand up and to make a difference. Yes. But trust God yes. that even if there are consequences sometimes, I'm not going to sell you foolishness, sometimes there may be consequences, sometimes there may be a backlash for you standing up. And doing what's right. That's right. Amen. But know that God has a ram in the bush. Yes, he does. Yes. All the time. And that he will always yes. provide yes. for his children. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Then Mordecai Jesus. told them to reply to Esther. Do not imagine. That you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. You see, because sometimes people, they have a bad habit of pretending like they don't belong to certain people. When they see them getting in trouble, then <laughs> look at those people. Beep, beep, beep. You one of them people. <laughs> For if you remain silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise for the Jews from another place. So if you don't move, when God says to move, God will move you out of the way. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And you will miss what was your divine purpose. You will miss your divine appointment. You will miss the blessing that God has for you. You got to move. And you and your father's house will perish since you did not help when you had the chance. And who knows? Say that with me. Who knows, who knows? whether you have attained royalty, your position of power, your position of influence, your position of authority, your position that God put you in. For such a time as this. Yeah, hmm. And who knows. Whether you have attained royalty. For such a time as this. Yes. And for this very purpose. Yeah. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Jesus.